daughter passed away on the 29th, but she actually passed away on the 21st, but they kept her alive to get through Christmas so all her friends could come and see her. They wanted me to pull the plug, and that, that's, that's asking somebody too much. I told them, I said, my wife is in the hospital, and if they pull the plug and something happens to my wife, I'm not going to sue them, I'm going to come after them, you know. Then I met Vanessa, and uh, she calmed me down a little bit. And um, I, I'll uh, never forget her for it, you know. She, she did some one hell of a job, you know. Outfit. She does. I mean, I think her hands look better this way, but you because know, of this that, cut thing, I feel like you're that definitely going to need to put some more cosmetics yeah. on. Yeah. One, two, three. Oh, I need to come in a lot. Have to go in. I genuinely care about these people, and there are some directors where it's just almost like an assembly line, like every funeral is the same. Every funeral means nothing, and every funeral should mean something. It's not something that makes you weird or morbid. It's a job, and it's a rewarding job that compassionate people get into. When I was maybe five or six years old, my mom took me to my first wake, and I went up and I kneeled in front of the casket, and instead of being like, overwhelmed with with grief or with fear I was just like how did they do that like I, I I needed to know that that was my childhood it was as weird as it might sound looking forward to going to a funeral home like I never thought it was something that I would be able to do I just wanted to know everything that I possibly could about the embalming process about what happens when someone dies about how you can help people through that while at the same time, you know, honoring the deceased, honoring the family. Did you check all the tags, make sure nothing's for a friend in the back? Yes, these are all for him. Wonderful. When my nephew was really young, he used to come, you know, visit my mother when she was still here. But he'd run all around the funeral home. And like each year, you'd wonder, when is he gonna be old enough to realize Somebody's in the casket right. there. <laughs> and he's running full speed around, and he notices the person laying in the chapel, and he goes, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, that's Mrs. Smith. What's she doing there? <laughs> well, if you ain't laughing, you're crying. I think this part actually going to pick up the person. I, kn I know it sounds weird to have like a favorite part, but I think this is my favorite part because this for me is when it becomes real that someone needs our services, someone needs me. Now this person is in my care. Now this person taking care of them is completely up to me. From this point on, they're my responsibility. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. I know it is very rare for a young woman to be involved in this business. Any time I go to a hospital or a nursing home, I get, is it just you? Did, did you bring anyone with you? Because they don't think that a woman does this sort of thing. They don't picture a woman taking someone from a hospital onto a stretcher, taking that person back to the funeral home, pretty much handling a deceased person by herself, which is what I do all the time. Since I had an interest in the funeral prof profession from such a young age, embalming doesn't bother me. Having to deal with pretty much every bodily fluid, that doesn't bother me. I don't consider it morbid or gross. There are some people, you get to know them, 
you get to know their family and through them you get to know the deceased and for me that's the most important thing getting to know the family getting to know the person that passed away because the more you know about someone the easier it is to honor them I'm really hard on myself you only get one shot and if you mess it up you mess it up if you can't make someone look the way that their family remembered them they're going to remember that like oh our dad looked terrible and they have that last memory for the rest of their lives so when I have a bad day at work when I can't make someone look the way I want them to look if I do something that was incorrect on a funeral I hold on to it for a very long time I don't know too many other young female funeral directors, but the ones that I do know, I'm actually very close with. To have two people that I can talk to, to know those experiences, I don't know if I'd be able to continue doing this job if I didn't have them to talk to. I think it's great that more women are entering this field. It's a comforting thing, you know. When I was younger, not once did I ever see a woman, and I feel like that's a big part of a reason why I never considered this a serious profession until I got a little bit older. When you see people suffering, you know, you know, sometimes it's as hard as it is for the family to say goodbye, it's a, it's a relief that they're not in pain anymore. That's how I felt when my Nana passed away, yeah. Yeah. you know. And they would want you to laugh and enjoy your life. Yeah, have a good time. Keep making fun of each other. I yeah, legitimately almost fell over. Easier to klutz. Does that look centered? It's perfect. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, I never thought that, uh, that I would lose my daughter and then, and then to lose your wife too, you know, it's like, uh, Since uh, both of them passed, I, I know I've cried every day. Um, sorry. Yeah, my daughter passed away on December 29th, and then uh, unfortunately my wife passed away on February 20th. My daughter's named Corey after Corey Beach. My wife and I met there. I go to Corey Beach every day, every morning. I uh, say good morning to my wife and daughter, and um, I can look right out at the water and right to the spot where my wife and I had our first kiss. Then at night, I go down, I say good night to them, and uh, I feel comfortable, and I leave and come home. And, um, uh, I, I can't get through the day without doing that. I found myself unable to uh, to comfortably go to sleep in my room. I wake up in the morning sometimes and uh, I look for my daughter and my wife still. Um, I hear noises in the house and, and, and you know I'm saying to myself, well, that's kind of stupid. you know I know they're not here, you know. The reason it's hard for me to talk about the connection that I make with people is because it makes me a little emotional. Like, it's, it's difficult to talk about because, like, these people only really come to see you because they've experienced such a loss and to see them go through that multiple times. They call you, they're like, Vanessa, I need your help, and you're like, <laughs> Again? No, no, like, it's, it's an awful feeling. That's, I think, the hardest part of my job is having to deal with people that you're familiar with, that you've come to genuinely care about, and they need my help. Again, it's, it's awful. It's, I, that's the one part of my job I dislike, is having to help people again. My daughter always said that uh, if anything happened to 
me, she would take care of my wife. And she always said if anything happened to my wife, she would take care of me. But here I found myself uh, not having either one of them. Vanessa, she could be part of the family, you know. I mean, that's the way I feel about it, you know. I wish I knew her before that, but um, it just means the world to me. I mean, you know, you, you, you never lose your, uh, you never lose your feelings or your love for your, for your child or your wife. Yeah, you walk through the house and it's, uh, even though they're not here, I mean, you love them to death, you know. And uh, I always will.